to me, as good a representative of the University of North Carolina as any university can have at any level, in any position, unfailingly kind, incredible man, and we lost him way too early at age 52. Uh, I texted Steve Kirshner, been the basketball sports information director, and he has a much be- bigger title than that, which uh, I, I can't off the top of my head uh, recall. But he is amazing, and I texted Steve as soon as I saw the release, and I just asked, are you okay? So for the sake of our audience, uh, how are you, Steve? I'm good. I, I just feel bad for his family and his closest friends and, and, you know, all of us who really enjoy working with Eric every day that we don't get that opportunity again, but um, also feel bad for all the people, you know, at age 52, he had so much uh, more impact to make and he touched so many people's lives way beyond what he did on a basketball mm-hmm. court. And he was a very good player. An outstanding college player and played eight seasons in the NBA. And uh, there was one year where he was hurt, but, you know, I've I've said nine year career. And, um, but what he did as in the community, as you said, I mean, I, you really don't need me to say your preamble was phenomenal. Um, And what he did as an ambassador of the university agreed, Uh, not just athletics ambassador or basketball ambassador, but, University, town, uh, the the community, the state. I mean, Eric was unique in that he he, as a student, he understood the impact that being a, a Carolina basketball player could have on people's lives, and he carried that through the rest of his life. And you don't often meet people like Eric Montross. Steve Kirshner is joining us here from UNC as a representative, a spokesperson uh, for the basketball program, the athletic department. Um, here's the thing about Eric. I There are certain people who are put on this earth and are givers. And and I'm not talking about, I mean, although fi- finances can be part of it, I just think that Eric was put on this earth to make others' lives better. Um I mean, is I think that's accurate, but if you could just kind of take that. Accurate and beautifully said, and absolutely accurate, because he, he looked at basketball as a way to contribute, as a way to give, um, and not just on the entertainment side, to be able to watch a fun game or, mm-hmm. or a championship team, um, but it was a way that that he could, whether it was through finances or spotlight or uh, impact, motivation, inspiration, whatever it may be, how can you do bigger and better things than just being a basketball player? He was extremely competitive. Uh, he hated to lose, uh, loved to win, uh, but he, he also knew even at age 18 to 22 as a college student that he didn't want to be known. That wasn't going to be the biggest and best thing he did in his life. Um, you know, his family, his children, um, his parents, the community, you know, the church, is, mm-hmm. those were the things that, that by being a basketball player, you could do even more because of, of all that you were given and all that you had to give. And I, I, I concur with what you said. He was a giver. I mean, his senior year of college, you know, the, the, impact that he had in the relationship that he built with a 15 year old cancer patient, Jason Clark. And I always remember Eric calling me angry one night. You know, this was pre cell phone <laughs> calling me on my <laughs> apartment phone and angry because he didn't understand why he got attention. And he said, he, you know, people think I'm a hero because I'm a good basketball player and I play for North Carolina, the number one ranked team in the country. And, and he goes, this kid, this kid fights cancer every day. He's 15. He's, he's living in the cancer ward, and he's the hero, and we should celebrate him. I mean, he basically got mad, and he goes, why can't, why sh- you should be the PR guy for Jason Clark, not Eric Montross. And that was, that was Eric. But it wasn't just something fleeting. He wasn't friends, and Jason passed away in, in February of a senior season. 
but Derek just didn't drop it. What did he do? He and Laura and his family, they went out and held a Father's Day camp for 25 years and raised money to build the Jason Clark Teen Lounge at, at the Cancer Center and was involved in other cancer charitable causes and, and other activities in town. That's what he used the basketball as a platform to do more. And wouldn't we wish everybody in a public forum could do that? Steve Kirshner is joining us from the University of North Carolina. I really have about uh, 60 seconds left or so. Uh, he's so private. I remember when the announcement was, uh, it probably came from you, uh, that he was stepping away and he was going, I mean, they were just going to huddle as a family. I just assumed because we all know somebody that has gotten through cancer, especially if it's early detection, and he's a young man. Uh, he was 52 when he passed away. But I just assumed that he would beat it. Uh, and maybe that's why this hit me so hard this morning. Um, how can people uh, help remember him? How can people, uh, is there a way to con- contribute? Is there a, a, a fund, a charity that he championed that people can pay their respects in that way? Well, I don't, I don't have details from the family yet on any specific, uh, but he was so involved in, in you know, be involved in your church, be involved in fighting cancer, whatever kind of cancer it is. He particularly, I think, had an affinity for pediatric yeah. cancer because he saw the impact that it had, not just on, on the kids themselves, but on their families. Um, and, and the reason he, he went public with the diagnosis in April was, one, because he didn't want speculation about his health out there, but two, also to show it, it's not a private fight. It's a public fight. If you have cancer, it is a public fight. It's you and your family and your friends and your colleagues and people you don't even know who send a note and be supportive. And that's why he put the note out. And they were embarrassed by the amount of attention, the millions of hits those social media posts got. That really embarrassed them. They were shocked by that because they thought, why do so many people care that Eric Montroff got a cancer diagnosis? And we had to explain, because you are special and the impact <laughs> you've made on so many people that you don't even know, that's why so much interest and that's why there'll be so much you know, recognition uh, and interest today with today's completely sad news. But at the same time, you know, the family, I, I know that they, this is an opportunity you know, we're hopefully people will say, you know, we remembered it, but we're going to we're going to fight even harder and we're going to support those who have cancer and other diseases harder and, and more. And it's a team effort, Steve. And that was why he did the message then and, and now. I appreciate your time always, my friend. I will talk to you very soon. Thank you. You got Thank it. you, Adam. Steve Kirshner from the university.